All right, guys, there's a lot to cover in this video, so it's going to probably be uh, pretty long, but I'm going to go kind of over the things that you're the bare minimum you need for automotive upholstery. Plus, I'm going to go over uh, what you really do need and what things you what equipment you're going to need to do uh, automotive upholstery because it's not just the machine. It's all the attachments that go with it. Uh, and you need to have a machine that takes those attachments. So if you're going to just buy a, any walking foot machine, uh, you might be shocked later on when you find out that it doesn't do what you want it to do and you're going to buying a different machine. There's basically two styles of walking feet. There's one where the presser foot itself walks. You can see there's this little mechanical thing here. Let me just see if I can get you guys up where you're a little closer so you can see the actual mechanism and the walking the foot itself walks and the needle goes straight up and down um, you can see that I'm kind of jiggling a little bit but the foot walks and that's a double feed walking foot then next we have a triple feed walking foot which is actually what happens is the needle itself pokes through the material and walks backwards so if you can kind of see the needle goes down and then you can see it walks back and the needle itself is walking forward and the presser foot just goes down and holds the material so which i have to have it down the presser foot just goes down and then it lifts up okay if you can just see that the the presser foot just lifts straight up and goes back straight back down but the needle itself walks forward this is a triple feed walking foot machine so things you're going to want to do with automotive upholstery you're going to want to sew on a binder on your carpet right this is a binder jig for uh, both machines will use this one uh, because they have two little screws right here this one the screws are on this side so I kind of need a little bit different setup as you can see there's two little screw holes right here and this is actually the correct attachment for this machine so you can see it has two screw holes here you take two two little thumb screws and you tighten them down real quick and you just go ahead and line that guy up you put your binder in there and then what it does is just you put your carpet in here or whatever sometimes you put binder on other things but generally it's for carpet and you put your your carpet in here and you pull it push it through and then your walking foot will help get it to go through there and then you'll end up with this result this is carpet binder and i put it on actually with that old rex machine and it looks pretty good but i did get some issues because it's not a triple feed walking foot machine it's very hard to do the corners and stuff like that with it and i only had my knee i only had my stitch at three millimeters i could put it at five that machine will go up to five millimeters which is another important thing you want five six millimeter stitch to get a nice looking you know one but if you can see stuff like it skips a stitch every once in a while because it's it's not feeding it quite as well as the other machine would so like this one with the needle feed it's going to be really positive it's going to pull it exactly whatever whatever i had it set up but if i have it set up at uh five millimeters it's going to go five millimeters like every time perfect so like this one, you know, you got up to five millimeters of stitch. Some machines only max out at like three. So you want one that it's at least five millimeters and takes all the attachments that you want. So that's the key thing. That's, this is one of the attachments. We're going to talk about all of them. So stay tuned. The other things you need are, you know, you ever seen that little piping that they put on the edge of seats? This stuff here, it's called welt. And if you want welt on your seats, which you're going to want on your seats, believe me, 
you need a few different sizes of welting feet. So you need like an eighth inch, you need a three sixteenths, you need a quarter inch. You're gonna need a bunch of different sizes because as you put more material on, it's gonna be thicker and it's not gonna to wanna to feed with the same foot. So you're gonna want a bunch of these welting feet. So if you can see there, that has the little shape of that that goes in that groove. And then what that does is when you feed it through the machine, it just stays in the same place and puts that welt right on there. Makes the job a whole lot easier. Basically what I'm saying is, is if you have the proper stuff, doing automotive upholstery is more just a time consuming thing than it is skills. It takes a lot less skills to do it if you have the proper machine that does all the stuff you need it to do. Again, I'm not an expert at this. I'm learning it myself uh, because what happened is during the pandemic, I had a guy that used to do my stuff for me for many years and he just disappeared. So I don't know what happened to him. So anyway, I uh, now I'm doing my own. I'm going to go ahead and do my own because a lot of the upholstery guys have gotten so expensive. I just can't afford to have them do it. So I'm going to learn how to do it and I'm going to teach it at the same time on YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that now and learn with me about automotive upholstery and how to do it yourself. Now I've covered the kind of machine that's best to have. You can do upholstery with that machine, but it is much more difficult to do. Uh, the results are not going to be the same as they are with a machine like this. This is a Conso 225. The problem with the 225 is it does not have a reverse. And that's not that big a deal because all you do is you do a couple of stitches. You run it over a couple times, lift up your presser foot, uh, move your material back and stitch back over that same area. And then keep going and do the same at the end of your uh, area that needs to be locked in because uh, a lot of upholstery stuff you're going to be doing this is a lock stitch machine you don't always need to uh, knock in your first couple of stitches because you're going to be sewing over that another direction so as you learn you're going to find out that that's not going to be that big of a deal it is kind of a pain because if you're doing a lot of volume of material then it might be better to buy one with reverse in the description I'm going to have a machine that's not too expensive. You can buy brand new Conso 1206. You can buy it brand new and it comes with everything on it that we're talking about in this video. And it ha takes the same attachments as this one does pretty much. I'm not sure if the screws are on this side or not on that one. That's something that, that might be a little bit different, but almost everything else is going to be the same as what goes on this machine. So one of the key things with automotive upholstery is you need to be able to sew very slowly. You need to be able to go around your corners and be accurate and very slow. This machine can be very, 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 very slow. I mean, you can stitch it almost as fast as you can hand wheel it, you know, with the pedal because it has something called a servo motor on it. And again, the ones on Amazon I'm talking about have the servo motor on them. Not all machines do. This is a servo motor. That big monster is a clutch motor. It says right on it, clutch motor. The servo motor, just like a servo when you're doing like airplanes and stuff like that, goes very slow. It can go very slow, but it also can go pretty fast as well. But these are meant to just for super super fast speed and that's not what you're going to be doing when you're doing automotive upholstery there's nothing worse than going into a corner trying to go really slow and you step on it and it just takes off on you where you doesn't really do that with the servo motor you can kind of work it nice and slow and sometimes you're going to want to grab the hand wheel and work that because you're just not going to want to go fast at all when you're turning really sharp corners like this uh, and this machine will do those corners more easily because of the needle feed. Uh, when it lifts the presser press foot up, it makes it so that you can turn a corner where the other one, the walking presser foot, is a little t tougher to make it want to turn. It just wants to go straight. Um, I mean, 
pretty much they both want to go straight. If you just kind of let them go, they'll go straight. But, um, you know, you can turn corners a lot easier with this one, especially with a servo motor. So you need a walking foot machine, servo motor. Now the next thing you need is a machine that has, that will take the attachments you need. So you're going to have the welting foot that I showed you. You're going to want a welting foot set. They make a welting foot set for this one on Amazon. Again, I have the link in the description. It's not expensive for this machine. For some of the others you might be looking at that are real walking foot machine that are triple feed, you might find that the uh, presser foot sets are more expensive. So you might go, hey, I found this really cheap walking foot machine. But you find out later that the presser feet for that are super expensive or not available. And then you just wasted money. So, again, those are all things. If you, I don't care what machine you buy, just make sure that it takes the attachments that I'm talking about in this video. Another thing that's really nice is one of these drop down feed wheels. Uh, I haven't got my presser feed in yet, so I won't be able to show you those, but I got a drop down feed wheel, and this one here bolts on, uh, I think, right back here, if you notice two threaded holes. So this one will actually fit on this machine and it goes on there and you can drop it down and then you can, you can see here, that thing walks back and forth. So now when you're putting, you set it up at, you know, whatever, 10 millimeter or quarter inch or half inch, you're, you set that up at that. When you push it through, you just run it up against that feed roller and you just go right along. So like I said, the the effort of trying to sew straight and sew uh, accurately becomes just a tool that you add to the machine. So you can see one of these things is really cool to make sure that it just sews nice and straight and your stuff is exactly the same distance and all that from your material so you get everything just right so another thing you're going to want to know how to do is flat stitch some people call this a flat stitch or a french seam this is a i don't know what the difference is i think the french seam has two one on this side and also one on that side but if you can see how straight that stitching is right there right next to that that's because that's done with a guide system. So you put on a different presser foot that has a little thing that goes down. I can't have one here, but again, there'll be a link in the description of it so you can look at it. It goes down and drops down right into that seam. And it has a distance between the needle and the seam. So they have like four or five or six different uh, ones, ones on the right, ones on the left. Okay. Uh, so, so however you're going to sew that, you drop that down in the, in the groove and you just feed it in the machine. The machine follows that groove pretty much. If you, as long as you just sew very slowly and just methodically and put it through there, it's going to do exactly a seam just like that by just using a tool instead of trying to so a perfectly straight seam, uh, you know, an eighth inch wide from the actual seam. You know, if you can imagine, that would be very hard to do. But with that jig, it's still a little bit of work to do, but it is that guide that helps you go through there. You can also use the feed roller guide as well to make sure that it doesn't walk. You know, it's just there's a whole bunch of things, you know, you're going to use together to make everything come out nice and straight so you're going to want another presser foot set that has the seam guide it's called a french seam presser foot so i think that's what it's called again look look at the links in the description and then it'll be self-explanatory so to get a nice looking thread on there your typical uh, automotive thread for most things is like V92. That's what most guys use 
for like sewing seams seams like this one here it's done with v92 now you typically if you're doing something that's going to show you're going to use 138 so there's 105 and there's 138 there's uh, 207 I think it is and 277 I don't know maybe there's one between there but those bigger ones are like rope uh, you know they're pretty cool um, and but they're not your typical automotive from what I know um, the if you're gonna have one that shows like what's on here you see that's pretty thick thread but not really thick this is a 138 top thread so your top thread is up here right you should run up to your thing you're gonna run your top thread 138 you're gonna run your bottom thread you're gonna still use v92 because the top thread's the one you're gonna see this one's just gonna be the one that loops it so uh, having a small size bobbin is not going to be that much of an issue however if you're doing a large volume of automotive upholstery again so if you're doing tons and tons of it like two three four two sets of seats a day or something like that you know typical big upholstery shop again you're going to probably want to upgrade your machine and get one that takes a larger bobbin or bobbinless they have those as well and again you know then the price starts to get to some serious money but you could use one of these and do pretty well in fact a lot of guys what they'll do is they'll take a bunch of so I'm doing a bunch of seats I'll do like five or six bobbins or before I start and then I'll just uh, have them ready uh, I believe this one here you can actually some of the machines you can actually uh, thread your bob, you know, fill your bobbin up while you're sewing, um, and it usually is done before you're done. So, but if you're using the same color thread and all you have is one roll, you can't really do that. So, what I'll do is I'll just fill up a bunch of bobbins and I'll have them all set, and I'll just stack them on my little thing over here. And this one you get, you got all these little things. My other one. It has this little pin. I'll just have a bunch of bobbins all set. I know it's kind of dirty, but the machine's going to get cleaned up and sold here. It's nice if you have more than one machine if you're doing volume, too. So that's why I would say, you know, even something like this would be great, great for one person. And it could do certain, set it up for just doing whatever. If you're just doing like a welt, have this machine set up for welt and just run welt all day on it. And then they'll have to reset it and change the presser feet and all that stuff. And then have another machine that's set up for carpet. Like if I was doing any kind of volume, I'd keep that machine and I would use it for carpet. Because it really doesn't do too bad of a job with that. So often you'll see professional upholstery guys that'll have two or three or four machines. They'll even have stuff like a post machine for doing certain things. And, you know, it, every machine's made... For di doing different things and what I'm trying to get to you in this video is that you want to have the right machine that will take the attachments that you need and you don't want to have to make them like I did with the other machine so like I couldn't buy the presser feet like I can for this for the other machine for this one so what I had to do is I bought presser feet that are for it but they're not really right and I had to weld two of them together so that it would work. So you have to do that sort of thing on some of the older machines and some of the ones that are a walking presser foot instead of a triple feed walk. Um, and maybe even some of the triple feed walks, you're not going to be able to find the proper, you know, the welting feet, the French seam feet. And it will do this okay you know, on the same machine so that's the type of thing that i'm trying to help you avoid by making this video uh, because if you buy the wrong machine 
and then you find out later then you're gonna be buying a different machine where as far as i know as but all the stuff that i've looked up and everything else the machine that i have there the console 225 the 226 r okay has a reverse that's the only difference really the console 206 takes the same walking feet as this one does the console 1206 is basically the new version of the uh, walking foot 206. So in the newer version, again, it's probably not like this one, I think was made in Japan or, you know, some of them made in Germany, but I don't think this one is. I think this is a Jap Japanese machine. Uh, and maybe the new ones are made in Taiwan or something. I don't know where they're made. And some guys are saying, well, the steel on these might be better. And I don't know. Conso swears by their 1206. They think it's a great machine. And I'm not going to discount the fact that they say that. So, I, honestly, I was going to buy one of those. And because I couldn't find a fair priced one of these. Uh, then one of the subscribers stepped up and said, hey, if you want a walking foot machine, I'll set you up with one. And thank you very much for that. Uh, he sent, he gave me a good deal on this machine so I could afford it. And I didn't have to go out and spend that extra money on the other machine. So even though it doesn't have reverse, which it did, but it doesn't, um, I didn't pay too much for it. So, uh, you know, it worked out pretty nice for me. But if you're looking at machines and you're going, hey, man, which one does she get? I'm looking at a Juki this, you know, whatever, or, you know, Nakamichi or all these different names or whatever that what's that one called uh for you know, and you need to know whether it's going to fit all this stuff because if it doesn't fit all the proper pressure feet and it doesn't take the thread size you want if it doesn't take 138 okay then you're going to end up getting rid of that machine this one will take a needle size 23 That'll take 138. You might even get to 207. I don't know about that. I don't think it will, but I don't think it'll take 277. I, I don't know. If it does, Lincoln, you know, put a thing, something down there. I, I don't think it will, but um, it's possible. I, I don't know. I think you got to have a pretty big needle for the, one of that, that real thick thread. Um, it's like rope again, so. But 138 is great looking exposed thread. And V92 is your typical. If you read forums, you're going to see everybody says V92, V92, everything V92. So, but 138 is nice, I think, on as a top stitch for a uh, French seam. I think it just looks better. So the ideal thing is if you're just going to get started and you can't afford it, you could get one of those type of machines there and just kind of do it for a little bit and kind of see if it's something you like. But you're going to be frustrated with it. I'll tell you right now. If you get a triple feed walking foot with a servo motor, okay, and you buy the attachment like this, you buy an extra bunch of bobbins, of course, especially if it's a smaller bobbin like what's on this it's a smaller they have larger bobbin ones that will carry a bigger bobbin bobbin than that i believe the 1206 carries a bigger bigger bobbin on it i'm not sure and make sure and look up how much the presser feet cost for that particular one you're looking at it's a bit of work to do just let you know it is a bit of work to do you're going to want all of those ducks to align or it's just not going to work out so if it has, you know, the proper thread size, it takes the 138 thread, and it'll do the, uh, you know, the, which is get, give you an idea. That's like a 23 needle, okay? You might be able to get it into a 21, but I, I don't know. I've read forms of guys that said they can't. They do use a smaller needle than that for 138. But I don't know. It, I've bought it by the book. I think it's a 23. So anyway, 23 needle, uh, servo motor, walking foot, preferably if you can get reverse. If not, it'll still work. You can do it without reverse. You just got to learn how to work without it. There's videos out on that. A drop, uh, what is this, 
stop feed guide, I think. This is what this thing's called. I don't know, link in the description. Um, and the French seam, uh, presser feet. And the, a set of the, uh, presser feet for doing welting. If you get one that has all of those things that'll do that, that will work good for you. If you get one that is like some of these other companies, there's companies on, uh, YouTube, there's people on there that sell machines and they're selling a machine with a double foot, with a double feed walking foot as a walking foot machine. You know, you need to know that that's going to have very limited amount of stuff you can do. And if it doesn't have the servo motor already on it, then you have to buy that because you're going to get frustrated with this clutch motor on this machine. This thing just it, it's just it's it's too much of a wild stallion. You step on it and you're trying to get it to go slow, and it just doesn't want to do it. So you end up doing a lot by hand wheel, which is nice. This one has a large hand wheel, so it works okay. But you know you're gonna do a lot of that, which is kind of a pain. It's real slow, and it's kind of I don't know. It's not fun. So having the machine that's going to just Put the attachment on just kind of almost works itself because everything's lined up oh another real quick thing is you're going to want to get us one of these instead of using pins like you do in sewing you know stuff in the house whatever with automotive upholstery if you have a hidden seam you can just use a stapler staple it together and then sew it so it's a lot easier you know, like if it's a tricky corner something like that you want to make sure it lines up good you go ahead and just use this sucker and just put it all together with that and then you know it, you just want to you don't you don't want to do it on something like this like I, you know this i just made a cover for this thing real quick i don't want to put staples in there because i'm going to see them but if it's a hidden seam like if it's on the inside of this okay and i wanted to hold it in place I could put staples on there to hold it in place with one of these style, style staplers. So I'll put a link in there for those too. Really handy to have. Another thing I was going to touch on is there's another company out there that says, sells a non, it's, they call it a walking foot, but again, it's not really a true triple feed walking foot. It's a walking presser foot like the other machine. And it's a tabletop unit. Now, those are kind of cool in one respect because you don't have this big monster thing to take up your space. But the problem with them is, is what I found doing some of this stuff is just having the table to feed in and work on is so necessary. You need, so you would need to build around that machine. You would need to build like a table that you could put in and put around it so that you could be able to work with it. It's, you know, it's not that, and it's only a double feed machine. So, and it may not take, you know, well, well, I think they sell them on their website, the walking feet for that, but they're so expensive in comparison to if you buy a regular walking foot commercial machine, it, the stuff for this is, pretty inexpensive you'll see in the link in the description how inexpensive the stuff is for the console 225 206 there's also some juki numbers on there they follow after the singer 111 so basically this is a singer 111 and it's all the parts fit on it okay it's but it's made by console and Juki makes one, Conso makes it. These are the most common that I know of. Conso also makes the 21206 and the 206, still makes that machine. And those machines are, are really set up for automotive upholstery versus the, you know, some of the other ones you might find that'll be a walking foot. You may have difficulty finding the uh, the presser feet 
that you need to do the projects you're doing. So anyway, I hope that kind of covers some of the stuff that I'm looking at, that you're looking at on this. And like I said, I'm not an expert at this. This is all stuff that I've been learning and maybe it'll help you because it's kind of fresh in my mind where a guy who's been doing this for years and years and years, he knows all this stuff, but he may not be able to convey it to you because it's not fresh to him. It's just like, oh, I don't know. I always use this machine. Well, why? Why do you always use a machine? I don't know. It's what I've always used. You know, that's kind of the way it is after many, many years of doing something. You don't think about why because you're just doing it that way and you're trying to find out from them a lot of different options and they're not going to give you any other options. They're going to give you, oh, I get, I use the, the FOF, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's what I use, period. Nothing else, you know, where you might be able to look up these things on your own and find another machine that you found a little less expensive and you can get the attachments that work on this one that work also on that one and they're less expensive to buy. So it's not just the machine you're buying. Okay. So I'm trying to get to, it's not just the machine. It's all the attachments that go on that machine that make that machine much easier to do the upholstery. Automotive upholstery from what I'm checking out is 90% or 80% setup, 20% talent. So 80% of it is having all the feed guides, having the, the, the proper presser feet for what you're doing, having the walking foot machine, having the servo motor that goes nice and slow. 80% of it's equipment. 20% of it is actually being able to do the work. Uh, and patterning and stuff like that is, it, that's talent, really. It, knowing how to pattern stuff. Because I'm going to do uh, this 54 oval window. I'm going to do the seats for that. I'm going to be doing the seats for my pickup truck. Because if you guys have seen the price of new pickup trucks, I am not buying a new pickup truck. My truck is going to be with me till the day I die. A new truck like mine's over a hundred thousand dollars. Not doing it. So I'm going to do my own pickup truck. I was going to have my guy do it. Can't do it now because I I can't find him. So I'm going to do it myself, and I'm going to get an excellent job uh, taking my time using the proper equipment. And if you want, to, guys, want to come along with me? Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out uh, what I'm doing. And hopefully, it'll help you learn from my mistakes because I know I'm going to make a couple mistakes and. You can learn from those and also learn with me. Maybe you're doing the same thing. You're kind of learning together how to get through doing our own automobile poster and also training the next generation of people that want to do this. Because to me, you know, I've seen the prices guys are getting now and it's like ridiculously high. I mean, just like 10 times what I, what my guy used to charge me, they charge, you know, I'm like, it, it's unnecessary. So I think if we learn together, we can get through some of this stuff and maybe you guys will come along with us and check it out and learn how to do automotive upholstery. I'll talk to you guys on the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.